Hello there, and welcome back to The Neighborhood. We're taking a look at the Blonde Times Zoo Reviews JoJo today. This thing looks like a dressed up blonde BL05. I never did a video on the 05, but there's a written review on www.intuitreviews.com. And let's just say, I wasn't a fan. So I was a bit apprehensive when I got asked to review the JoJo by Linsoul. But I love JoJo's bizarre adventure, and I like the colorway that Z chose. So let's take a closer look and get into it. According to Winsel's website, the JoJo is an upgrade to the blonde BL05S. The shell cable and ear tips were definitely an upgrade with the retune, but I'm unsure if its 10mm composite driver was but I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that it was. But we'll probably let someone do a teardown and comparison of both sets to confirm that suspicion or not. But in any case, we finally have a blonde with a nice cable. I suppose the A8's cable was nice enough as well, but I like the cable Z and blonde chose to pair with the JoJo. It's a bit plasticky, but it's got a nice weave, doesn't retain memory, and fits the two-pin connection of this and other blondes well. If you can deal with the purple aesthetic, which I quite like a lot actually, from a certain point of view, the JoJo could be worth it for its cable alone. It reminds me of a cable that I recently got from my Sennheiser 560S from AliExpress, which I'll place a link to in the description below. But I really like both of these cables as value propositions. The Blonde's cable terminates in a straight, single-ended 3.5mm silver jack and initiates in a Blonde-style 2-pin connection. It also has a silver, metal Y-split, and chin cinch. I've knocked other more expensive sets for cheaping out and using a cheap piece of plastic as a chin cinch, but I think Z and Blonde have made the right call here by including a metal one. But even though they did include a better cable in the box, they did not include a better case. The traditional burlap sack style Blonde carrying bag is all that is included. For the $50 price tag of this thing, the cable is a nice upgrade, but a nicer case would have been a welcome inclusion as well. Three sets of ear tips are included though, so there is some value there. Unfortunately, I really only like the sound of the JoJo with the clear, small board, more rigid set of tips. Neither the floppy clear ear tips nor the black silicone ear tips did this IEM any favors. So any sound commentary made from here on out will reference the JoJo with the clear stock small board, non-floppy variety installed. The shell is metal with a metallic purple paint job with gold accents with JoJo inscribed. The Z Reviews logo is screen printed on the right IEM and the blonde logo on the left IEM. Advertising suggests the paint job was designed to be durable, but only time will tell if this is more than just marketing. I will say that the shell does have a nice heft to it, but isn't so heavy as to sag in the ear. The angle of the nozzle on this set also appears to have been improved or enhanced to fit the masses from the BL05, at least to some extent. Even so, someone who struggles with IEMs with a shallow fit may want to take a pass on the JoJo, as it is still rather shallow in its insertion into the ear. The sound of the JoJo is a warmer and richer one, but also seems to favor warmer Class A amplification to sound its best. Initially, I ran the JoJo off the tangent space and BTR3K on my phone, and I was rather disappointed, at least to a certain extent. The JoJo just came across as rather flat, lacking in sophisticated dynamics, and just sounded a little bit like a dead fish to the ear. After giving the driver some time to work itself out, I moved on and tried the JoJo off the iFi 6XX signature amplifier at my desktop, and then gave the Truthier Shio a shot off my phone. With these other pairings, the JoJo performed much better, beginning to display some musicality. I then decided to see what the JoJo could do, from the Bravo Audio Ocean with a yellow 12AU7 Raytheon installed. This is where the JoJo really seemed to shine. The Ocean has a large amount of gain, and with the JoJo, it took it like a champ. Ultimate Resolve is a bit fuzzy around the edges compared to something like the BL03, but clarity appears improved, and the JoJo scales better than almost any other blonde, keeping up more with the A8 than blonde's other offerings. So these aren't a giant killer or end game as some would like them to be, but they are rather enjoyable, relaxed, and a lush and warm listen for those with reasonable expectations. 
Unlike the original blonde BLO5S, which had a rather aggressive peak around 2 to 3K, the JoJo was never aggressive in the course of my listening. I had no problems with sharpness, harshness, or sibilance. The overall frequency response is a rather smooth one, and the mid-range is also well represented. It wouldn't be a Z-Reviews collaboration, though, without the bass being a bit too emphasized. It's not entirely overkill, but it does bloat a bit and is accentuated beyond neutrality. There's a healthy amount of mid-bass, which extends into the sub-bass. Positively, the JoJo was capable of rumble in the ear on certain tracks, so it's a bit of a double-edged sword. It's also not the most informative low-end, and it's rather one notish with regard to the sound of the JoJo's low-end overall. The treble is also somewhat limited and not really extended very well. With that said, the treble was enough for my ears in most genres, but the JoJo also isn't going to win any awards for its air either, and treble heads will likely want to take a pass on this one. In further comparison to the BLO3, vocal standout is more forward but thinner on the O3. Vocal separation and isolation are better in the O3, but instrumental separation is better in the JoJo. Furthermore, I wouldn't say that the O3 is shouty per se, but the O3 does stand out to the ears having more shout in comparison to the JoJo, which has a smoother presentation overall. The JoJo is also warmer, with more sub-bass and less mid-bass. Additionally, the stage of the O3 is more stepped back in terms of its listener perspective when in comparison to the JoJo, which is more average in terms of its soundstage and not as stretched wide as the O3 is. Compared to the Truth Ear Zero Red, both are warm, but the JoJo is warmer and thicker in its tonality. The Red is also a bit more technical sounding in terms of its general presentation, with some more depth to its sound and separation is just better in the Red. Still, the JoJo is more romantic and seems to scale a bit better than the Red, whose performance is certainly more consistent across devices. But I would classify both IEMs as an excellent warm option for those that are looking to spend 50 bucks. Even so, for whatever reason, I find myself missing the JoJo more than the Red when I go a period of time without listening to them. Perhaps I'm still in the honeymoon phase with it. I'm not sure. Your mileage may vary. But to close, I mostly like the package that Blonde and Zia put together with this one. Finally, we have a rugged Blonde below $50 with a good cable and at least one set of nice ear tips in the box. It still doesn't come with a nice case, which I would like to see added in future models, and its shallow fit may impact some wares negatively, but I had no problem with the fit on my end. I also love the colorway that Z chose here. It reminds me of my custom shop Fender Stratocaster that I've owned and loved for years. I'm also surprised at how these grew on me and how well they scale with power. But you will need the right amplifier to get good sound from the JoJo as it sounded a little bit like garbage off poorly matched sources, and seems to enjoy current and a bit of a warmer source to complement it. Being a Z-Reviews collaboration, I'm actually surprised that it didn't come with a 4.4mm balance cable, which might have been a nice addition to draw additional power from certain sources. And before you go, make sure you smash that subscribe button and tap the thumbs up if you enjoyed the content of this video. You can also keep up with the channel on Instagram, on X, Twitter, www.intuitreviews.com, or become a Patreon. There's also a Discord for you to join. I'll place links to all in the description below. I appreciate everyone for watching though. And with that, I'm out for now.